Okay, I'm here to do part two of the glute pattern dysfunction for RPR and performance uh, uh, reflexiveperformance.com. I will clarify the one, two, three hip pattern for hip extension, and I should put this in quotes. I will put it in hip extension. Nothing else. There's multiple phases going on. Um, so what the discrepancy and the concern is about some of the concepts I stated. And I'm going to explain what's really going on and how some of the research can be convoluted a little bit. So sorry to review this really quick, but the correct tip extension pattern for optimal performance is the glute fires, hamstring fires, then the QL for hip extension. Okay. Um, this is most optimal for high performers. Again, it's an explosion of force. So the hip fires then the forces go down to the hamstring and it fires correctly in, in, in split seconds apart and then this actually fires for for stabilization purposes also one of the wrong hip extension patterns is the hamstring fires first versus the glute and the ql so basically the hamstring the ql and the uh, hip fire in this order and it is a wrong pattern here's what's happened you have pulled hamstring issues with this I've uh, I've seen these athletes when they run their hamstring locks up okay they often try to stretch it which is dangerous which I've covered in the previous video and wide stance powerlifting actually is is part of the issue here um, with an athlete that tends to run so I don't recommend that now wide stance powerlifting is important for powerlifting not necessarily athletes Okay, so then the other one is the most dangerous one is the contra is the QL, the contralateral QL is firing, then the hamstring, and then the glute. Again, it's an implosion of forces versus an explosion of forces, and this was all covered in my previous or, or, uh, video. Now, disc problems, okay, basically with this pattern, this rib and the hip bone, if you feel the gap between them, there should be about four fingers in most people, and when they have this pattern for any extended period of time, I've seen zero fingers, I've seen the ribs pulled inside the hip bone, which causes disc problems, and so on and so on. Um, bracing can actually start this pattern, but we've covered this in the previous video. Now, I'm here to talk about the discrepancy. The discrepancy shows, research shows that other muscles such as a hamstring is on when the hip extension is starting, even before the glute. I understand that. Uh, and that's what the research says. And I've received a number of, of emails from scientists and PTs and people, you know, pointing out this research. And, and here's for me to clarify. Uh, the glute needs to start hip extension drive and the drive comes from the glutes even if the hamstrings are already on now why would they be on well because there's multiple phases okay the hamstrings are on because there are already multiple phases in running look I'm talking about hip extension I'm not talking about the non supports phase I, I haven't talked about the absorption phase the stabilization phase the loading phase and the propulsion phase separately there's more phases in movement but I'm just giving you these basic ones. So, so let me, for example, the hamstrings cannot go from zero to a hundred in a split second. There has to be tension. Okay. So, with that being said, for example, as the hamstring, let's just use a slow motion running. Hamstring is oh, right there. It's probably being extended and being turned on. It's being stretched because the lower shank is is going forward. Oh, right there was probably the maximal stretch. Okay, now there'll be another stretch when the foot drives, when the foot plants the ground. So, if the hip is pulling the leg back, the hamstrings already fired when it comes into that phase. The hamstrings already firing before the hip may even why is the hamstring firing because it's being stretched before hip extension pattern initially starts so that's the non support phase and then there's the absorption and landing phase which the hamstrings can be turned on during all these phases now look even here once the foot struck the ground if if the hamstring wasn't firing and supportive okay then the quad would extend the leg okay 
And what would happen is the runner would undulate too much, and then you could have injuries because the hamstring wasn't on. So the hamstring is realistically on and, and not relaxed all the, when it's not being in used. It has some level of tension. Some people refer to that as, as slack, muscle slack. Now, these levels of activation right there are you have to understand the inputs are, are as important as the outputs. So if this person has tight hamstrings, the level of activation is through the roof right now. Through the roof. Um, and being tight is not always a bad thing. Okay. Now, let's look at sprinting. So as we go here, let me shut that off. So as Usain Bolt's going here, we'll wait for the next leg. Oh, look at that. Hamstring's probably being stretched and activated before the glute does gets involved in hip extension. Now, it's still being stretched two ways, lower shank and being still stretched from the, the upswing on this uh, the front part. Now, it's going to be stretched as the foot strikes the ground. There's going to be huge amounts of, of force there. Okay, so remember, I need you to go back and realize that there are all these phases that all these muscles can be turned on and, and less turned on turned on more or less in individuals and I'm when I say hip extension I mean pure hip extension from the point where we're trying to propel yourself forward so here's an example of my ASFM jumps where an athlete he's jumping and he and he actually pulls himself down into the movement so in the air he's actually pulling himself into position so when he strikes the ground he's loaded and ready to jump again on the next frame see how fast he is you have to have hamstring activation when this when the quads working in to get this hamstring so that you can stabilize the knee so that the hip can start the hip extension part of this while the hamstring's still on. So yes, EMGs will tell you that this hamstring's on, but people that don't perform well or have bad hip extension, that hamstring will initiate, after it's tight, will initiate the movement and not the glute. And this is the one, two, three pattern we're talking about. Okay. Um, the biggest thing I think people have to understand, um, you know, I get, I'm glad there's internet police and, and scientists who reach out to me in a, a very nice way. But what I'm saying is, if you just test the one, two, three hip pattern with movements such as I have, as as various um, uh, methods with like the tendo force plates, you will see that that particular the correct way to fire if you get that pattern correct you have optimal performance athletes move faster and more effectively um, and most of the time I found that the scientists that reach out to me on the internet I tell them to go try it they've never worked anybody out they don't have anybody they've never even tried it before they've called me they've never even assessed it they just follow what a research study shows which didn't make clarification on all these phases right here that actually happen in the movements okay so and some quick advice for people um, when you're when you find a new method which I always try to find new um, I, I know there's experts out there at times that have written like articles as they're the expert in the world um, on a new device that they had and they only had it for two weeks um, which is kind of hard to do in my opinion but look, if you don't have any experience on on coaching or application in regards to some of this stuff, you uh, you may have to contact the person and say, hey, could you clarify? And that basically, this is what I'm doing is clarifying um, the the one two three pattern for people for hip extension, not the absorption phase, not any other phase that exists out there. This is exactly um, the one two three hip extension, and just test what I'm saying with force plates, tendos, other devices can be jump mats and you'll see if you get that pattern the person reaches optimal performance.